Hi! I need a second video for this month, and I'm nowhere near completion on any one thing in the Escape. For example, here's one of the battery cooling plates that I just made. I'm very proud of it. A little rough around the edges, but that's okay, because i got to make five more of them. So, it's Q&A time! I asked you all if you had any questions about the Escape on Patreon and Twitter. Mostly Patreon. And I'm going to answer those questions. Nothing complicated today. <laughs> We'll start with the questions from that bird website in no particular order. The first question comes from, and this is just random chance, Hubnut, does it do a double burnout? Oh yeah, it'll do a double burnout. I have limited slip differentials for both drive units coming today, so once I get those installed, it will be capable of the best burnouts. Not just one wheel peels, all four wheels. And the best part is, the two drive units are completely independent. I could put the front one in reverse and the rear one in forward, or the other way around, and do big ol' cyclonic burnouts. Do you think you'll make the deadline? I hope so. That's all I have to say. Do you know how much it has cost so far? Oh boy, do I! I've got a spreadsheet where I'm tracking the major expenses, and so far that spreadsheet is up to $32,000. Why choose Chrysler Pacifica modules and not a wrecked Model S or Model 3 pack? This is one of those modules right here. It's entirely because of power density. These modules, I'm going to have four of, four of them in parallel and six of them in series, can put out, or are capable of putting out 1,500 horsepower. A Model S battery pack is not capable of putting out the power requirements that I need. Yes, a Model S Plaid would be capable of that, but I can't get the batteries from a Model S Plaid. A Model 3 is definitely inadequate, and a Model S, an older one, is also inadequate. I could only get maybe 500, maybe 550, maybe 600 horsepower out of it, and I'm going for 900 horsepower. That's why. They're not powerful enough. Will you be able to deactivate the front motor easily and do burnouts with your now 450 horsepower rear wheel drive escape? Yes! I could also disconnect the rear motor or put them in different directions. The possibilities are endless. I don't know if you can answer this yet, but how heavy will it be compared to the stock escape? I don't know the answer to this either. I estimate it'll be about a thousand pounds heavier. First half of this question I already answered, but the second half, will you be able to use public charging stations? If yes, will you? Yes! If they're AC charging stations, I won't have DC rapid charging capability right out of the gate with this Escape. I've gotten in contact with the company in the UK that is developing a CCS kit for aftermarket EV conversions that is US compatible, but it's not available yet and probably won't be by the time that I'm done with it. But that is a future thing. Since this is your first EV conversion, are there any aspects of it that genuinely surprised you? Yeah. It is going to take so much work that I initially anticipated to make just the battery boxes. Sorry. It's going to take so much work. I have been experimenting with materials. I have been back and forth and forth and back in my head. I have been mulling over this for about two weeks now on how I'm actually going to make the battery boxes. And it's gone through many, many iterations in my head. I'm surprised how difficult it is just to make a containment device for these battery modules. And the thing about these battery modules is they don't have integrated cooling, so I have to make these cooling plates, which just added a whole new level of complicated on top of it. But aside from that, it's pretty much exactly what I expected. On a scale of one to mint chocolate chip, when a cow jumps over a blue moon, what is your favorite scent of the alphabet? I enjoy this style of comedy. Rather than going for any sort of complicated punchline, you just spew unrelated nonsense. So my response to this is, Hi, welcome to my bathtub from the 70s. This video is sponsored by Factor. Ready to heat meals delivered straight to your door. Factor meals are delivered to your door in a refrigerated box. You take them out, you put them in your fridge, and when you're ready to have a meal, you just stab them a couple of times and throw them in your microwave for two minutes, and you've got a delicious meal ready to eat. I know it's not like a broken record, but Factor meals really are as delicious as I am reaching over to the toilet, as delicious as I say, and I really do recommend them. Aside from ready to heat meals, they also have these delicious smoothies, which are fantastic and apparently have a whole coconut of hydration in them. I'm just reading off the bottle now. So if you want to try Factor for yourself, go to factor75.com slash agingwheels and enter No, go to factor75.com and enter code agingwheels in the promo code thing wherever to get 50% off your first box. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're doing this in one go.
You know that's not true because you've already seen editing cuts. Also, what do you think of my Robin's Egg Blue bathtub? The other one's avocado green. And here's one from Jared. How much wood could a Robert chuck if a Robert could chuck wood? I'm gonna get a chunk of firewood and chuck it at your face. Now we get into the slightly better questions from Patreon. First one is, are you going to integrate any of the original Ford controls or gauges into the EV system? All the gauges are not gonna work. There's gonna be some idiot lights on, like a light telling me that I'm out of gas, because obviously there's no gas tank there anymore. Yeah, none of it's gonna work. I'm gonna have the AEM control dash mounted up on, what's it? I've got it somewhere. Hold on. Okay, I found it. I've got the AEM can control keypad. This has my drive mode selection, forward, neutral, reverse, and park, and some other stuff. This will be the main input. I've also, this will be my dash. This is the seven inch screen from AEM. This will tell me everything I need to know. There may be a few other controls I add, like I thought about adding a little handbrake looking lever for my manual region input, and I'll have a throttle pedal from a Prius. Everything else on the Escape will remain as is, except for the throttle pedal, obviously, but most of it will be unfunctional. Everything on the dash is still gonna work, though. Everything in the 12 volts I haven't touched. Will there be a drag race between you and Jared's Hell Camino? First of all, it's not how you spell his name, but also, hey, yeah, and I'll win easily. Will you need new axles? Since I'm sure those stock ones aren't rated for that much. Yeah, I already needed to get new axles made for adaptation between the Tesla Drive Unit and Escape Hub anyway, and they're going to be beefy. They're going to be real beefy and also really expensive, but yeah. What plans do you have for the instrument cluster? What about comfort amenities such as AC and heat? Will you make this road legal? There's some other stuff in there. I am going to make it road legal. Absolutely, I would consider this project totally pointless if I couldn't drive it on the road. That's what I'm looking forward to the most. I'm not worried about AC and heat right off the bat. As I already mentioned, that is very low priority. I may tackle it in the future, but that's gonna involve getting the inbuilt HVAC system to communicate with something to turn on a high voltage air compressor, and also I'll have to install all that stuff, and to turn on a high voltage heater. Very low priority because it's going to be complicated. So I'm just gonna go it out for a while. What was the other one? Do you have plans for the instrument cluster? I already said that, no. How much did you pay for the battery pack? Oh, oh boy. Um, I really want EV conversions to be more popular, but they're not going to be with these prices. These modules, I bought 24 of them. It was $21,000. Do you have an estimate on range? Yes, so my battery pack will be 64 kilowatt hours because I chose power density over energy density. Let's add some buffers and make that 60 kilowatt hours. I don't know what my efficiency will be. I'm gonna assume it's gonna be real low. So let's go with F-150 lightning numbers, two miles per kilowatt hour. That'll be 120 miles of range. It could be better, it could be worse. I really don't know. I built this thing for power, not you know, long distance cruising. So I know 120 miles of range may be disappointing to a lot of you, but I don't care. Cause I, if I wanted to build a range monster, I would have built a range monster. That's not what I was going for. Are you worried about breaking or bending the sock suspension components during hard acceleration? 400 plus pound feet per axle is immense. Let's talk about this. In the rear, there's these two pretty spindly arms, but this huge forged arm here. During heavy acceleration, this whole wheel assembly is gonna be pushed forward, which means the load is gonna be transferred through this beefy arm directly into the frame. These two arms aren't gonna do much. I'm not super worried about the rear suspension. In the front, I'm a little less sure about it because rather than a big forged arm shoving force directly into the frame, you got this pretty beefy control arm, but it's still just bent sheet metal rather than a big forged piece. I might end up boxing this in just for peace of mind. Then there's a matter that this whole front suspension is held in by four volts. Four. That's what's holding this subframe to the body. It's, I'm sure it's fine. This Escape was initially front wheel drive and meant to handle most of the power at the front axle. So I'm sure it can handle it, but you know, it makes me uncomfortable. What BMS are you using? I'm excited about this one. I'll be right back. Of course, I'll be using the BMS for my partner, AEM. They make their own BMS now. It has a lot of advantages too. So something like an Orion BMS is centralized. So all of the cell balance leads, which in my battery pack is gonna be 96 of them, have to go to a centralized location. This is decentralized. This is one of six satellite, well, there's gonna be one master and five satellites that daisy chain together. Each one of these handles 16 cells, which is, well, they can handle up to 18 cells, but one of my modules has 16 cells in it. So I'm gonna have one BMS unit per module. The modules are gonna be at four in parallel, but 
per module and they'll daisy chain together. So rather than, ha and since my battery pack is going to be decentralized, I'll have four separate battery boxes located around the escape. Rather than having almost a hundred leads going to a centralized location, I will have one of these in each battery box, two of them in some of the battery boxes, and all of the cell taps will go to one of these units, and then the only thing that has to leave the battery box is two in-communication wires, two out-communication wires, a power and a ground. Six wires compared to what would the other alternative be? 24 per module? These are so much simpler than a standard BMS. There is one downside though, and that these aren't actually standalone BMS units. The VCU, the AEM VCU is what does all the computing. These are just hardware pieces, so they have to be used with an AEM VCU. That is the only downside, but I'm already using all AEM components, so this is great. I like this question. If money slash time was no object, what's something ridiculous you'd love to add to this project? A trailer with a range extending generator in it. Now, a basic form of a range extending generator could be as simple as you got a small diesel engine hooked up to an electric motor. There's your range extending generator, but I would want to go more complex with that. For instance, Cosworth makes something they call the cat gen. It's a turbine, a turbine range extending generator. They've apparently tested it in a transit plug-in hybrid, and they've managed to get an efficiency of five liters per hour out of it for 35 kilowatts, that's insanely good. You could drive forever, and it, it's a turbine. It could run on anything. You could run it on gas, diesel, kerosene, used fry oil, anything that burns. Hydrogen, you could run it off that. It wouldn't be very efficient, but you could do it. So yeah, that's, a, that's what I'd do. How much of the actual fab will be usable on the bus, or is this strictly a learning platform? Well, at the beginning of this project, I said that I was going to rip everything out of the escape when I'm done and put it in the bus. It's not gonna happen. Uh, I have fully decided that I'm going to leave the escape and it's just going to be a learning project because way too much of it is specialized. Not, I mean, think about all the time I put in the motor mounts. Think about all the time that I'm, you won't know this yet, but all the time that I'm putting into the fabrication of these battery boxes that are specifically designed for the escape. None of it's transferable to the bus except for the knowledge that I'm gaining. So the escape will stay intact when I'm done with it. And the bus, I'll just have to buy parts all over again. All these, these batteries, too, they're not suitable for the bus either. So it's going to be very expensive, that's all. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> do you worry what the public response to this car will be? What do you want the response to be? I don't know if you all realize this, but I am so very happy that you all are responding well to this escape project and that it is popular because... I risked a lot by making this. I was unable to afford this project when I started. I was just hoping that it would bring in enough viewers and enough sponsorships that I would be able to afford it later. And thankfully that is the case. Otherwise, I would have been out of money and then sunk all of my existing money into this project that no one wants to watch. Okay, this question is really good. The first part of the question, safety. The AEM VCU has a ton of safety built into it. First of all, they require an insulation monitoring device, which I haven't actually purchased yet, but it monitors for high voltage insulation faults and then shuts everything down immediately upon detection of them. And like I said, it requires them. There's redundancy for the throttle. It requires two throttle inputs. There's redundancy for the braking system. It requires, it doesn't require two brake switch inputs, but it highly, highly recommends them. And all of the, it walks you through all of this in the documentation of how to make it as safe as possible. So good job, AEM. The second part of this question is about continuous power output. Sustained high power with the Tesla drive units. This is one of the weak points of these drive units. I think it's because they're induction motors and the rotors require cooling, but the continuous power rating on a, Tesla, on a large Tesla drive unit is only 45 kilowatts. That's 60 horsepower thereabouts. That's the continuous power rating where it can run out forever without overheating. That's the entire reason, most of the reason, that I'm using two of these drive units in tandem in the bus because 45 kilowatts of output continuous, I don't know if that'll be enough, but 90 kilowatts with both of them added together, I think they can handle that. And if that still overstresses the drive units, if they still start to overheat like that, 
I'm gonna go with a chiller setup, like the F-150 Lightning does. When you get a Max Trailer tow package in an F-150 Lightning, there is a second air conditioner compressor loop that is added just for the motors, and I think maybe the battery, but mostly for the motors. I might go that approach, in fact, I think I will go with that approach with the bus. To make sure the motors don't overheat, add an air conditioner to them. Will you be calling it the Escape? No, that's too obvious. Actually, my Holly rep that I've been working with to get all this AEM stuff came up with a better name for it. The Escape Pod. That's all the questions I had for now. You'll be seeing the next part of the Escape Project in about a month. As the deadline gets closer, I'm getting more and more stressed about it. Also, here's a laser cut part. This is the inside core of one of these battery cooling plates. I'm really proud of this. I didn't make it. I just drew it up in V-Carve and then sent it off to a company who did make it, but so beautiful.